So I got to be honest with you. I have a love and hate relationship with horn speakers and most compression drivers. And I guess it would go something like this. Hey guys, you want to come over to my house and listen to these awesome speakers that I have for the next four hours? No. No thanks. And yet, horn speakers still have this, this thing that we have talked about on this channel a number of times. Maybe it's that snap, that presence, that lively and crisp sounding top end. I gotta say, there are so many awesome audiophile treats that only horn speakers can bring to the table. Now when it comes to these little 4309s, the question is this. Has JBL given us everything that we love about a good sounding horn loudspeaker and have they completely ditched the unnatural sounding cupped hand nonsense? And with a warm welcome back to New Record Day, that's exactly what we're gonna find out. Before we dive in, just a quick word from today's sponsor, Safe and Sound. So these speakers were sent direct from JBL, but Safe and Sound, who is a dealer for JBL, was kind enough to sponsor today's video. Now, to be clear, Safe and Sound, they haven't seen this review. They have no idea what I'm going to say, and it all comes down to this. They are the kind of place that I like working with because first and foremost, they trust me and they trust my reviews, and they take great care of anyone that I send their way, and they have some of the most knowledgeable staff waiting to help you build the rig that you really want. So yeah, with a ton of great brands, a large selection of amplifiers and speakers and so much more, Safe and Sound is the place that you want to go to get the 4309s. Do me a favor, tell them that Ron sent you and they will take it from there. All the links that you need are down below in the description and thanks to Safe and Sound for today's sponsorship. The JBL 4309s are a stand mount speaker offered by JBL. The speaker specs are shown here, and the main things that I want to point out is this little guy sports the HDI, or high definition imaging horn, paired with, yes, and it just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy to say it, a six and a half inch cast frame paper pulp cone woofer. That's right, folks. No aluminum cones here. And when we get to chatting about mid bass and bass and lower mid range, what I'll be saying sounds very different than what I had to say about the HDI 3600s that we reviewed a while back. Also, a really cool feature is the 4309 does have a built-in UHF attenuation dial for the tweeter. So depending on your room acoustics and layout, you do have some handy controls over the top end. Taking a look at the back, the 4309 does offer the ability to buy amp or buy wire. And we will chat a little more about gear pairings later. With retro styling, a beautifully finished cabinet and killer blue baffle, this speaker looks the business. Getting that out of the way, it's how it sounds that matters. So yeah, let's chat about that. There is a myth or a misunderstanding that it's the job of a tweeter to create the excitement that we hear in music. It's just not true. Many loudspeaker manufacturers play games with tilting the top end that perpetuates this nonsense. And while these kinds of speakers are fun for about five minutes, what we, or what I am looking for in a speaker's extension is truth. You can't handle the truth. I don't want or need a tilted top end to make things sound exciting because, and this is my point, hear me, it's not the job of a tweeter to make things sound exciting. It's the job of the music. If the music is well recorded and exciting, the speaker simply needs to get the heck out of the way and let it happen. Why did I kick off this listening impressions with this rant? It's simple. The 4309 is not playing this ridiculous game that many of its horn loaded competitors are playing. Right where it counts, where we hear the fundamental crack of cymbals, splashes and crashes, this little 4309 is pretty much flat as a pancake. Taking a look at our gated response, we can see only a couple of spots that drift from the five decibel threshold shown in the faded red background. The small rise between 900 and 1K appears to be the woofer's response, which we can see here with the crossover relationship. Now, way up high, way, way, 
way past the fundamental hits of symbols, this HDI tweeter seems to be freaking out. And that peak is the same thing that we saw in the HDI 3600s that we reviewed. Is this anything to worry about? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think so. That band is so narrow and so high, I seriously doubt you'll be hearing anything nasty. And for the record, I didn't hear anything nasty. What I did hear, however, is balance. Snaps, cracks, and small intricate details punch through the mix, and when the music calls for excitement, it's all there, and it is always balanced. It never sounds tilted or exaggerated. With the little UHF dial on the front, you can even flavor the time domain, and taking a look here in red, moving up to the highest value in blue, you can see the differences using the dial are minor. I like the top end voicing of this speaker and not once did I feel that it lacked anything. At the same time, it never sounded like it was lying to me. And you know what? When it comes to top end extension and someone telling lies, ain't nobody got time for that. Upper mid range and beyond also sounded great with the 4309s. Trying out ACDC's Back in Black and making my way through the entire album, not once did I hear anything in the upper mid range that sounded shouty or forward. All the intricate details that I know so well, they were all there waiting for me to enjoy. Even more, this is where a horn speaker seems to do some interesting things with presence, and the 4309s do it with the best of them. Presence is the key word, folks. It perfectly describes what I'm chatting about. Essentially, most of the upper harmonics of mid-range and anything fundamental in upper mid-range does sound more like a front row experience. For those who like a laid back, deep sounding speaker with layers upon layers of staging, this is almost the opposite of that. While one isn't necessarily better than the other and it could come down to your own preference, I found all or most of the mid band and above to sound more exciting, dynamic, and heck, best of all, it was present. Another thing that I wanted to mention and back it up with measurements, even though there is a sense of presence in the upper mid range, it's also well balanced in its horizontal and vertical response. The horizontal axis looks pretty good with a minor dip at the crossover point between 10 to 30 degrees and a more aggressive dip at 40 degrees, which is shown in blue. I think what's happening here is we are well past the point of the horn's directivity and the response starts to cave. While this is pure speculation on my part, there is indeed a lesson here. Considering how balanced this speaker is on access and how clean things look from zero to 30 degrees, this is a speaker that you'll want to either point at your ears or just off access. You could try crossing the streams, which we have talked about in other videos, but after trying it, I preferred listening to these either straight at me or pointing at my shoulders. The vertical response looks pretty impressive on the speakers and even better than their horizontal performance. Even with the microphone 16 inches above the tweeter shown in blue, the 4309 does keep a pretty consistent response. While it's not the gold standard or the best that we have seen on our channel, it does look good enough to pass without complaints. Through the heart of midband, where we are hearing more from the woofer, I think this is where the 4309 might win you guys over. With its paper pulp driver, we have texture and tone, which is the one thing that I felt at the 3600s that we reviewed was lacking. That's right. Whether it's Dominique fils May, Mark Knopfler, David Gilmore, or Nora Jones, the human voice in these speakers sounds absolutely delightful. While deeper mid-range bordering mid-bass can be a little more pronounced with the 4309s, its presentation is mostly neutral with just a dash of heft and weight in the lower octaves of mid-range. It's possible I'm hearing something from the front ports, and while I considered plugging them or investigating, I ultimately decided that if it sounds good, it is good, so why bother dinking around with it? Also, acoustic bodies have beautiful textures, resonance, and weight. Same thing can be said with anything percussive, and I loved listening to stripped down jazz ensembles with these speakers. They seem to teleport me right to the club, and there ain't a dang thing wrong with that. With that front row exciting experience combined with some body in the lower mid range, this speaker will surely turn some audiophile heads in a quick hurry that love the sound of horns. 
As we move into mid-band and bass, the speaker is going to sound confident for its size and will be one of those speakers that has you wondering how it's doing, what it's doing. While this is largely room dependent, and I gotta say, one of my friends who heard these at their place didn't really get the same low end that I did, I gotta say, I was really impressed. Easily dipping down into the 40s is no problem with these speakers, and even more, provided all this mid bass and bass with texture and tone. One of the big takeaways with the speakers is its ability to not only bring this presence that horn fanatics live for, but it follows that detailed presentation with a nice amount of detail in the lower frequencies as well. And I think that's due to that woofer's material. When listening to upright bass, I had zero issues with hearing the body of the bass, the inside harmonics of the resonances, and every little nuance that follows. Come to think about it, the only thing that I've heard that is better than this texture and tone is the addition of speed and articulation that we only hear in open baffle offerings. Perhaps one chink in the armor of the 4309s is they aren't the easiest speaker to drive on the planet. While they ain't no Maggies, just remember, they are 4 ohms and 85 dB sensitive. They do offer the ability to buy wire or buy amp, but I didn't need to go that crazy. My advice when it comes to pairing, skip the Fleawatt tube amps and reach for the Sherman tanks. Anything starting with 50 to 75 solid state watts should do the trick, but remember, the more you give the 4309s, the more they give back. So it's been a while since I've heard a horn-loaded loudspeaker that I truly loved without compromise. The last speaker that got me excited in this category was none other than the JBL Studio 530. While that speaker is still a sleeper and a fantastic choice on a budget, the 4309 is superior in every single category. As for JBL's competition, Klipsch does have a large lineup, but I gotta be honest, balanced or linear is something that I haven't heard from them. So for those who want balance without the tricks, tilted top end or rules of proper bracing ultimately being ignored, I think I just found your next speaker. That's right. The JBL 4309 might be one of my favorite horn speakers under 2000 smackaroos. And with that, I'll see you horn loving knuckleheads in the next video.